What are you most looking forward to in 2024? Meeting people, uh, the opportunities that'll come from that. Uh, we've got some exciting things on the horizon, uh, but for, for this uh, for this podcast, um, I would like to, you know, just keep meeting new people and, and see what opportunities open up. How about you? Yeah, I, you know, this is episode 40 and you think back, things can be a grind, right? Whenever you're doing something and you're trying to grow and you're, you're, you're going to week by week, but the reality is there's so much joy in the middle of all this, like in just a year, an amazing amount of opportunities to both go places, meet people, get connected to folks, um, bring on guests that we never, I mean, if you'd asked us week one, we probably would have said, Hey, we hope we can get a pro, but the layers of individuals that we've been able to get on. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm more excited about what those next layers of individuals look like on top of what's going on behind the scenes with best ball as a brand and where we're planning on going with that. That's, uh, I'm way excited about that. I think that's going to be amazing. special edition of the whole story podcast robbie and jonathan here no guests today but we will be talking about some of them uh this is episode 40 jonathan uh hard to believe we've gotten a number 40 yeah I, you know whenever you turn 40 i think you're supposed to be real adults so apparently we're growing up uh although i don't know is this like in dog years because we're really only ending up season one so yeah, yeah. crazy to think that uh well, I don't think we ever thought, we always knew that we would get this far because you and I were just going to keep going. Crazy, the people and the opportunities that we've had in 40 weeks, like literally just 40 weeks. Um, and we're going to share some more later about what the next 40 weeks is going to look like too. So we're excited. This is incredible. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been quite a ride. We uh, we published our first episode or posted or whatever you want to call it, uh, March thirtieth, uh, twenty twenty three, and we're sitting here, uh, end of December, uh, right before Christmas time, and yeah, forty episodes. We were we were high fiving and celebrating. I think it was Kyle Walton's episode where we hit twenty one, and we're like, 21. yeah, we we've we've made it into that one percent, and yeah. so um, it's pretty exciting. What uh, what uh where we've been and like you said the guests we've had places we've been the opportunities that have that have opened up and uh and the things that are on the horizon it's pretty exciting yeah. i recently went back and watched the first episode and i was like i can't believe anyone would watch the second one we had fun but i for those of you who haven't watched you should go back i i was like a week or two out of surgery i was trying to hide my patching and scars and oh man we had no background we had nothing behind us in any way shape or form like we picked the worst spots in our houses to ever do anything it was crazy yeah yeah so. we're uh we're trying to get a little better so but we're having yeah. fun doing it like you said we're That's we right. talk anyway so we might as well talk about uh talk about golf and and hear some great stories from great people so well we for thought sure. we'd do for episode 40 we thought we'd do kind of a a highlight show things uh, from the whole story podcast season one that uh, stood out to us. So um, we got to play some golf, as we mentioned, Jonathan, I'll ask you first, uh, what was a course that's new to you that you got to play? Uh, that was kind of your, your favorite new to you course this year. Yeah. Well, I mean, the first one, I think I would say the nicest course I've ever been on would be old Barnwell. Um, I'm, I'm still, I'm jealous of some of the places you're going to list here in just a second, but yeah, old Barnwell, uh, just whenever you walk out there and they've designed it this way to look out almost, almost over the entire layout of every single hole, it's just, it's amazing. And then to actually play on a course where the greens are ex what they're supposed to be, uh, it was, it, it was just incredible. Um, and then my sort of second place which still is a one I'd like to go back and play the whole amount. I play, I was over in the uh, UK and I played the Rufford Park Golf Club. Um, I played seven holes, six holes maybe, because at some point my body just quit and I couldn't hit anything. Um, but I was reminded of when we interviewed the UK golf guy and he talked about how so many times we're going to those special places that we forget to stop by all the other courses that we pass along the way. And they have these moments that will just capture you. Um, and I had that moment I wasn't playing well. I'd already picked up my ball on the hole before 
and I walked up to a par three and it was just this beautiful downhill par three over a little pond. And it was an amazing morning. And then I hit it like 25 yards off to the left. Like it was a terrible golf shot, but still like it's one of those courses that's just there that if you didn't go and just show up, you wouldn't have got that kind of experience. So hopefully someday I'll make it back to that neck of the woods and play all 18. So yeah. What about you? Uh, um, you've got well, some heavy hitters. Well, um, it has been a good year and, and excited about it and very thankful. Uh, got to thank Brandon Smith, a good friend of, of mine uh, who got us on old Barnwell. Um, what an experience. Uh, that course is everything you just described and more. And we got uh, the pleasure of talking with Morgan Purvis um, on an episode. So that was a lot of fun. You know, I, I reached out, I got to, uh, go to Pinehurst. Uh, Alex yeah. Pilegar was a guest on our podcast. I got to record from there. I had my son Archie with me. Um, incredible experience. Played uh, number two, where they're going to be playing the Open uh, this year. Uh, so that was fun. And then through another guest, Kyle Walton met Jeff Birch and got to go play Landman. So, um, you know, it's hard to pick one that uh, that was your favorite new to you course because every one of them, it, yeah. uh, you know, on their own, uh, would be one of your favorites. So, uh, very thankful, uh, thankful for that. But I guess, Jonathan, of, of the courses that you played, is there one that you would say was the most fun? Yeah. Again, I had a chance to travel a little differently than, than you did this summer. Cause you did all the highlights and I went to just find a little hole in the walls. There's a, there's a par three course in Andorra, called the Val Dordino. I'm sure I butchered that because I butcher all sorts of names. Um, it was something where I showed up. The guy couldn't speak English. I didn't speak, I don't know, I think maybe Spanish. I don't know what language they speak in Andorra. So we're like writing out how much it's going to cost and how you can play. I borrowed some clubs and bought some balls. And uh, I was like the only person on the course, but they're 50, 60 meter uh, that took me a while to figure out why my why, why I was falling short because I was measuring wrong in some places. But so many ups and downs, and, and it was just fun. Uh, it was really nice outside. Took my shoes off, walked the course barefoot, and uh, yeah, I played eighteen holes. They've got nine set up with two different tee uh, boxes to the same same location. So, just a great great uh, morning of golf. Um, and then the other one would be, and we talk about this all the time. It's about who you play with. You and I have just played regular golf. Like, Hey, what are you doing this week? Or can we get together? And we played just some normal courses in our area. Uh, Linrick, uh, we went to Fort Gordon or sorry, Fort Jackson last week. We've been over here at, um, oh, the one just down the street from my house. I just skipped their rain, but like just regular golf and man, those have been fun too. Like yeah. just good days of golf. Yep. All about uh, all about who you play with, and and yeah. yes, while those were were all fun that you and I got to play, um, I'd say the most fun, just for a three day stretch, got to go to Landman, um, you know, hang out with Kyle Walton, hang out with Jeff Birch, hang out with uh, so many other folks, caddies from from Bandon, um, you know, uh, shout out to uh, my my guys Blair and um, and Cap and and all those guys, but uh, you know, there's so many people that. You know, it closed course, and I think there were 40-ish of us. Um, so folks from all over that uh, are, are self-described golf sickos that just love to play, love to hang. So we had, you know, eight people in a fairway, and uh, we're just playing, having a great time. Uh, very relaxed environment. But what Rob Collins uh, and Will uh, Anderson and, you know, who owns the place, but what Rob Collins and, and the King Collins team have done to make that place – they made it a fun course. And so uh, it, uh, it it was a highlight. And I really, really hope uh, that it all works out, that we'll be back there uh, this coming year. Yeah, I hope so, too, because I'm, I'm, I want to be a part of that trip instead of just, like, chatting while you're there. Yeah. Um, I want to see the wind sock. That's what I'm really interested in. I want to see how, how, how do you play golf whenever the wind's blowing at 45 miles an hour left to right. Yep. You have so fun, obviously right? we started this podcast because of stories, right? So at the end of the day, something's going to come up, but uh, what would you say has been the funniest golf story that we've heard so far this year? Well, I kind of pried it out of him and that's because um, we had Tom Coyne on and, you know, big fan of his writing. If you've, if you haven't read it, 
Um, he's got a course called multiple things, Scotland, a course called America. He's working on a course called home, but in a course called Ireland, uh, there's a store we, we pride a little bit out of them. Um, but I'll just leave it as a teaser. Um, the, the, they were staying at like a, uh, I don't know, almost an Airbnb type place, uh, in his travels. He was with three buddies, some kind of bathroom humor. Like you gotta go get the copy of the book. But having him uh, kind of caught off guard when we asked that question um, and then figure out that, man, it, it took a little bit to get it uh, it, it published. Uh, but the the owner of the the publishing company was like, absolutely, this has to be in there. Because like you said, it, it might not be, hey, let me tell you about this eight foot putt. It's yeah. the stories that go with it. You know, what you're doing when you're hanging out, you know, at the hotel afterwards or at dinner or just, you know, friends on the course. So that was uh, that's probably the funniest for me. Yeah, for me, I, we were, I was thinking through what episode did I probably laugh the most? And it reminded me of Wayne Ridgeway. I happened to be there the day he hit his hole in one and didn't pay the 10 bucks to the guy standing there uh, to win, I don't know, like a thousand dollars in the clubhouse or something like that. But the funniest part about it was his buddies ribbing him on it. And just, again, the stories that they had of uh, just so many moments where you're out with friends and something that seems normal happens, but it turns into epic stories for the next year whenever you're uh, still reminiscing about it. I love that part. Yep. Well, Jonathan, your favorite question. We've asked uh, pretty much every guest during our quick nine, but we asked them about food or snacks on the course. And we've heard about some some cool places that have some pretty unique food items. But uh, from our guest, um, is there one course or one food item that you really want to try to get to and, and have uh, have yourself? Yeah, I mean, we were both typing the same answer at the same time. The uh, the Olympic Club Burger Dog. I, I don't even know what that means but it sounds like something we should probably eat. Uh, yeah. And then a close second, or if there was a way to put the two together, the milkshakes from the Memorial. I, I just, how perfect would it be at the end of a golf or in the middle of golf? Cause I don't mind eating in the middle of golf. Uh, if you're interested, I do love tacos in case you haven't caught on yet. Uh, I'd eat in the middle of golf. If you gave me a burger on the ninth hole, I hey, you go ahead. I'll ride this one while I finish it out. So how about yeah. you? Yeah, the burger dog, right? So Patrick Hanning said, oh, the, there is no other answer. It is the burger dog. And I think someone who has played that much golf, you know, he's still yeah. on the RGV tour. He's at like five, I want to say 558 now of new courses, new 18 hole courses that he's played this year. Uh, and he's still got another week or two to go. Um, but when year. someone like him says, I've been everywhere, it is the burger dog. You got to go yeah. get that one. Yep. Yeah, for sure. All right, so we've heard a lot of them, but what is your favorite hole-in-one story that was shared this year on the Whole Story Podcast? Uh, there has been a ton, um, but I got to go back to episode two. Um, a good friend of mine who I've known for a long time, Donald Taylor, um, got to play at Augusta National. Uh, he had uh, he skimmed over his hole-in-one on the par three course, uh, yeah. and then he described his incredible back nine playing from the Masters tees where – he goes eagle on 13, eagle on 15, and then got a hole in one on 16. Um, from you know buddies that he was with, I was not there with him, not one of those. But his, he had good friends with him, and the place that you did that, and you got a hole in one at 16 at Augusta National. It uh, it might be hard to beat that. Yeah, I feel like you guys should be handicapped somehow because you all get together on a foursome, and apparently a sister's better, and you all go out for the what is it over there at Ben Lippin. Yeah, we played in a booster club tournament. It was fun. Brandon <laughs> and Smith. And, and you yeah. won? Because of course you did with that kind of guy. Um, you know, for the longest time, I think my favorite one was the hole in one on a par four by Kyle Walton. Uh, and and you hear this all the time where people say they hit the hole in one and they're looking for the ball because they thought they lost it like normal and it happens to be in the hole. And that's exactly what happened there. But Mark Immelman, like, how do you top a hole in one at Jim Nance's house and with all? And it wasn't like he was by himself. Like there were people there, all that pressure teeing off, hoping you don't hit his house. And here he drills a hole in one. So I think, I mean, that's probably the most elusive one, right? I mean, maybe someday we get invited to Jim Nance's house, but I don't know how you can replicate that. Yeah, that was uh that was pretty special. So uh I, I think we tied on our next answer. Um, yeah. you know, we had to give a shout out to the person that uh that joined us from the farthest away possible. And hopefully, you know, it was fun. We've gotten people from all over the world that have joined us as guests, but shout out to Stephen Dinkins who 
got up at 5 a.m. his time in uh, in Kenya uh, to yeah. join us um, for an episode of the Whole Story Podcast. And Jonathan, we were talking about stats and listens earlier. Uh, I was looking at it. Kenya is one of our, I think it's in the top five, top 10, uh, oh. Nairobi, Kenya uh, of cities that listen to the Whole Story Podcast. So we're big in Kenya. Yeah, and we also, you're talking about planning golf trips. We hope to go to Kenya someday and play golf with Stephen. Uh, maybe we can find a giraffe to come watch us too. Yep, yep. All right, so we got to record uh, in multiple places uh, throughout this experience. You uh, were with family, and you were um, like got up in the middle of the night on a few occasions. But yeah, where was the favorite spot for you to record from uh, an episode of the Whole Story Podcast? Man, um so as Robbie mentioned, if you've been paying attention, I was in India, Nice, France, and also London uh, for a couple of our episodes. Uh, nice was one where I woke up and was outside at like two o'clock in the morning. Um, London, we had just made it to our hotel. So I joined a few minutes late. Uh, I'd have to say India. Uh, India is close to my heart to be able to go outside and uh, share some of the beauty with our, our listeners. Uh, if you watch on YouTube, Um and to be able to know, it, we even got to go to the golf course there in Shillong and watch uh, some golfers play. I ran into some social media influencers too, who are just taking pictures outside. But like, just know that golf extends all over the world um, in different places, different ways. But yeah, I, India had to be fun for me. Yeah, I would say just for the historical aspect, uh, being able to record a podcast in Pinehurst. Um, yeah. you know, to walk off the cradle after playing that with Archie and say, you keep playing, I'm going to go, uh, sit in the boardroom with Alex Podligar and we're going to record a podcast. Um, it would have only been better, Jonathan, if you were there, uh, with yeah. me and not having to be online, but we'll, uh, we'll try it again. We'll do that. Yeah. The one thing that caught me was whenever you were in Landman and you basically had like an impromptu interviews with like seven people. Cause they just kept showing up to the RV, which was awesome. Like people just sitting down here, take the mic and uh well i mean you were just sharing stories of what had happened on throughout the day so yeah, yeah. yep a lot of fun Good stuff um do you have a uh a best memory on the course this year i guess it doesn't have to be whole story podcast related but you know highlight? i was thinking about this and in my head there's just this montage of at the end of holes not every hole because we're we don't do that well but there are holes where you and i are playing and we don't, we're pretty even keel on a course. Like we don't yell a lot. We don't like get like jumping into each other or anything else, but it's, it's super sweet. We're at the end of a one where both of us parred or we both got a birdie or whatever. And it's just a little fist bump as you're walking back to the cart. That's by far my favorite part of playing golf. Yeah. For those on the audio, we won't, uh, we won't let you hear the sound of tears falling right now, but <laughs> um, I would say for me, uh, yes, again, all those are incredible times. I completely enjoy uh playing with you and love doing it um uh, but to get to take archie uh to experience yeah. playing at pinehurst for my first time but That's getting right. to take him there and watch him enjoy it because uh, he's a pretty good golfer and he absolutely loved it and it was fun because it was uh in the summer right after he graduated high school right before he went off to college so something i'll remember for a long long time yeah for sure yep um, what course, I mean, if there are any left in your book now, apparently, what course are you most looking forward to playing in 2024? Uh, well, like you said, there's plenty of courses out there, sure. both the, the well talked about and those that are the hole in the walls that we need to get to, uh, Sweetens Cove at the top for me, um, yeah. after experiencing Landman, what Rob Collins and the team did there with that course, uh, knowing that Sweetens was their first one. And if you follow Sweetens on social media, like, you can't not want to go hang out there and play some golf. So uh, it might work out that uh, that will be there in, uh, in in early June, Jonathan. So I, yeah. I really want to go play Sweetens Cove. How about you? Yeah, I mean, I would put that on there. But after watching and hearing your stories of actually playing Landman, I want to go to Landman. Like, and and yeah, I just don't know how I don't want to go there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, see if yep. I can hit some knockdown shots. That'd be fun. Yeah. So if we, uh, if there is a course out there, I'm just thinking of courses and maybe the stories behind it, people that might be there at the course, is there a course where, you know, we talk about filming on site, recording on site that you would like to go get some stories from next year? You know, we've, we've talked about this and, and hopefully it, it can happen. We, I'd, we'd like to go to Pinehurst and interview 
all the people behind the scenes because you want to talk about stories like uh whenever if you go back and listen to that episode the social media director will tell you there have been people who've been there for decades and so and have real relationships with not just pros but members and other folks that are coming in and so i would love to just be in a room uh, uh the caddy tales mentioned this the stories that go on with the caddies it'd be great just to go sit in a room with the caddies for a couple days and just be like tell me about your day because there's going to be stuff that comes up or tell me about your best one uh yeah i think pinehurst if we could because there's so much history there if we could find those stories and kind of pull them out that'd be awesome yeah i'll uh i'll take that and, and let's go international i'd love to go to the old course right let's go to st andrews and sit down with some folks there the behind the scenes everyday yeah. people um you know there's man the stories that you would get from that that would be that would be amazing um all right is there someone we talk about course we want to visit to interview folks there yeah. is there someone in the golf space could be a player could be caddy could be whoever that you would want to have on as a guest uh, of the whole story podcast next year yeah, one we've talked about and one we haven't. Uh, I recently just drove up to Nashville, had a bunch of hours to listen to podcasts. So the first one, John Smoltz, like, man, I, you, everyone who's been paying attention, I love baseball and golf. And to be able to put those two things together, that would be super cool. And then one that I think is kind of out of right field for most folks, Lance Armstrong. Uh, I, I love the Tour de France. I got to go see it this summer. And I mean, I got into it because of Lance Armstrong, but he loves golf. He plays golf a lot and apparently he's pretty good. I don't know how we would censor out his language. We'd have to work on that one. We'd have to be like, Hey buddy, this is like a family friendly thing. Cause he, he, he lets them fly. Uh, but yeah, if I, if you could get those two guys, that'd be awesome. That'd be it for me. Yeah. Uh, I do love the off the wall, but you know, we haven't had uh, any pro golfers on. So I think, you know, we've reached out to folks like Joel Damon and his caddy Gino. Uh, I think they would be amazing uh, on just telling stories, making fun. of That might be where we'd get our funny stories for next year. Oh, um, somebody like Max Homa, um, you know, Tony Finau, what it's like to travel around with the family and everything. So um, we, we, we will have, I don't know if one of you guys will listen, but we right. extend the invitation uh, to anybody uh, out there uh, who wants to be a guest on the Whole Story podcast. Yep. Yep. So, uh, well, as we're ending up 23, what are you most looking forward to in 2024? Uh, meeting new people and seeing uh, and hearing some great stories. Uh, you and I talk about all the time. There's an endless supply of golf stories. Everybody's got at least one. Uh, yeah. Even if you've played golf one time in your life, you're like, yeah, one time I went to the driving range. But meeting people, uh, the opportunities that will come from that, uh, we've got some exciting things on the horizon, uh, but for, for this, uh, for this podcast, um, I would like to, you know, just keep meeting new people and, and see what opportunities open up. How about you? Yeah, I, you know, this is episode 40 and you think back, things can be a grind, right? Whenever you're doing something and you're trying to grow and you're, you're, you're going to week by week, but the reality is there's so much joy in the middle of all this, like in just a year an amazing amount of opportunities to both go places meet people get connected to folks um bring on guests that we never i mean if you'd asked us week one we probably would have said hey we hope we can get a pro but the layers of individuals that we've been able to get on and so i'm just i'm i'm more excited about what those next layers of individuals look like both the ones that everyone like the name that everybody might know but then also the people that you've never heard of, and yet they have the most interesting stories and perspectives on the golf world on top of what's going on behind the scenes with best ball as a brand and where we're planning on going with that. That's uh, I'm way excited about that. I think that's going to be amazing. Yeah. Well, why don't, uh, since you've opened that, uh, open that can, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on with best ball? Yeah. So obviously we started uh, best ball and the whole story podcast and uh, by meeting all the different folks over the last year, we've realized that there's there's other perspectives on the game of golf that we think uh, that we think needs to be shared. And so we are starting a collective brand under Best Ball of podcasts related to golf. So we've already got uh, Caddy Tales is going to be our first one uh, up there in Whistling Whistling Straits. Yeah, that? he's in Wisconsin. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Up in Wisconsin. So we're going to be uh, he's going to be bringing in folks. Uh, we've got another one. 
uh, isn't completely like inked paper, but uh, heading the direction where uh, we're going to be focusing on junior golf. And uh, we're also talking to a couple folks about some travel folk, travel people that are uh, out there in the community putting together golf trips. And so uh, if, if you're an individual who thinks you have a unique perspective on the golf, on the golf world, and you're, you think you have a, a voice that needs to be shared, but maybe you're not sure about how to do everything behind the scenes, let's get in touch because that's what Best Ball's uh, wanting to put together and create a family. Uh, imagine next December where we're out there the first weekend or something with our Best Ball podcast family uh, playing golf at a course somewhere. That that That's like, that's it, right? Like that's the dream we're going to be planning that soon. So yeah, I, I don't know. What do you think? I'm, I'm excited. Like I'm, yeah. I'm over the top on that. Uh, it, uh, it's crazy that, you know, through 40 episodes, this is where we're at, uh, taking mm -hmm. best ball and, um, yeah, it's a media brand. Um, it is a growing media brand and helping, helping those, like you said, uh, out there that have a unique voice in the game of golf, different perspective can, can, can get interviews and talk to people from, uh, different areas because there's a ton of people that have golf stores and, and golf yeah. perspectives um, and helping those that we talk about it. Um, not everybody has the time to record, to edit, to produce, to publish, to market, to, you know, get sponsors and all that stuff. And we are at Best Ball are going to be that for them. So we're looking for hosts that have stories to tell that don't have the time. Um, yeah, get in touch with us and let's talk uh, maybe about helping you produce uh, produce a podcast. So it's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. Um, yeah. And who knows uh, this time next year, what will uh, all the highlights we'll be talking about. Yep. Yeah. I, I, we just walked through the highlights of this year and I don't know if either would have, either one of us would have thought that we would have had the highlights that we've had so far. So I can't wait to next year. It's going to yep. be crazy. Absolutely. Well, Jonathan, as we, uh, as we wrap up any final thanks or, or thoughts on the whole story podcast. Yeah, I mean, as always, uh, we want to thank the folks that take their time to come and be on the show, uh, you know, that that respond and say, yeah, I've got something and I'd love to, the encouragement that we've had so far of some, I would call heavy hitters, like guys that are, have been in the industry and in this world for a long time that have just been encouraging. And then of course, uh, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for people listening. So if you are one of those listeners, uh, we really appreciate the fact that you show up every Thursday and uh, learn more about the stories and folks that we're talking to. So hopefully you're listening to this and you'll show back up. Uh, if you if you forget it every once in a while, it's really easy. You just subscribe, like, or follow, and you'll get notified as it turns out through social media. Yep. I agree with uh, with all of that. We do want to thank all our guests. Um you know, we can, we've got plenty of golf stories. Um, they're not as good as what our guests have. So thankful, uh, very thankful for our guests that have joined us and those that have already, uh, booked, uh, booked for next, uh, next season. So we're excited about that. Very thankful for everybody listening and yes, please like follow, subscribe, all of that fun stuff. Um, thankful for the places we've been. Um, but got to give a shout out. Thank you to, uh, to our families. Um, yeah. You know, Jonathan's wife, Keisha, my wife, Emily, and our kids and and those that have given us time to uh, to hang out and to do this fun thing. Um, but uh, I'll take a personal uh, second. Jonathan, thank you uh, for the support and your friendship and uh, helping awesome. make this possible. Um, it's a uh, it's a tag team effort. And I, I appreciate all that you uh, you bring to the uh, to the to everything. So thank you very much. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do this with anybody else. So I wouldn't even say I wouldn't want to do this. With me. I just wouldn't be doing it unless it was you. So this is great. Uh, more fist bumps to come along the golf course. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate it. This has been some highlights of season one. Looking forward to season two. Uh, thank you guys for joining us on the Whole Story Podcast. Whole Story Podcast.